वेलकम टू द डेली करंट अफेयर्स बाय सिविक सेंटर आई एस वेर वी ट्राई टू डिस्कस द टॉप टेन इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स फॉर द यू पी एस सी सी एस सी फिल्म फॉर द डे फ्रॉम द हिंदू द इंडियन एक्सप्रेस एंड द पी आई बी डिस्प्लेड अ लिस्ट ऑफ टॉपिक्स विच वी हैव चोजन फॉर टूडेज डिस्कशन द फर्स्ट आर्टिकल ऑफ द डे सी इज दैट द यूनियन कैबिनेट एक्सटेंडेड वन टाइम स्पेशल सब्सिडी ऑन फर्टिलाइजर डाई अमोनियम पॉस्पेट इन शॉर्ट कॉल द डी ए पी एट अ रेट ऑफ थ्री थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड रुपीज पर मेट्रिक टन टिल फ्रॉम जनवरी फर्स्ट वन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव टिल फर्दर ऑर्डर्स फॉर द मोर द कैबिनेट ऑल्सो अप्रूव द कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ द प्रधानमंत्री फजल बीमा योजना एंड रीस्ट्रक्चर्ड वेदर बेस्ड क्रॉप इनिशिय क्रॉप इंश्योरेंस स्कीम टिल ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव ट्वेंटी सिक्स इन दिस कॉन्टेक्स विल फर्स्ट टॉक अबाउट then we'll look at the pradhan mantri fazal bima yojana see dye ammonium phosphate is the world's most widely used phosphorus fertilizer know that it is made from two common constants in the fertilizer industry and its relatively high nutrient content and excellent physical properties uh, make it a popular choice in farming and other industries uh, talking about its chemical properties the chemical formula is nh42 hpo4 Whereas the composition is 18% nitrogen, 46% P2O5 with 20% phosphorus. Whereas the water solubility is 5588 grams per liter, and the pH is 7.5 to 8. Moving on to talk about its use in the agriculture. See, DAP fertilizer is an excellent source of phosphorus and nitrogen for plant nutrition. Furthermore, it's highly soluble and thus dissolves quickly in soil to release plant available phosphate and ammonium. Remember that a notable property of DAP is the alkaline pH that develops around the dissolving granule. Talking about its non-agricultural uses, it can act as a fire retardant and also in various industrial processes such as the metal finishing. Then, an addition to the wine to sustain the yeast fermentation, and lastly, an addition to the milk to produce cheese cultures. Moving on to talk about the Pradhan Mantri Fazal Bima Yojana. See, it was launched in 2016 with an objective to provide affordable, comprehensive crop insurance to farmers, covering risks uh, from pre-sowing to post-harvest. Know that the coverage is uh, it protects against the non-preventable natural risks, and also it includes localized disasters and post-harvest losses like cyclones, heavy rains, and hail. Know that it follows one nation, one crop, one premium to ensure uniformity and accessibility. Furthermore, there are some tech-driven solutions. Uh, firstly, Yes Tech, which uses uh, remote sensing for yield estimation, replacing traditional crop cutting uh, experiments. Uh. Secondly, Cropic, which employs geotag photos for real-time damage assessment. And lastly, Winds, uh, which develops hyperlocal weather data through automatic weather stations and rain gauges. Uh. Furthermore, we have the National Crop Insurance Portal, which streamlines the interactions between the farmers, insurers, and banks, uh, ensuring transparency. These are the achievements uh, under the Fasal Bima Yojana. But there are some recent developments also. See, uh, the scheme is getting getting continued, where it was approved until twenty twenty five twenty six with an outlay of sixty nine thousand five one five point seven one crore. Furthermore, there is fund for innovation and technology, which is rupees eight twenty four point seven seven crore corpus uh, to enhance technological integration. Uh. Moving on to talk about its significance. Firstly, it provides a financial safety net, uh, stabilizes incomes, and promotes uh, innovative agricultural practices. Secondly, it mitigates risks from natural calamities, ensuring resilience in Indian agriculture. Lastly, it enhances the accuracy in crop damage assessment uh, and accelerates claim settlements. Uh. The second article talks about the velvet ant. See, this velvet ant is found in Caatinga region, a stark, dry shrubland in the northeastern Brazil, uh, characterized by arid grasses, thorny trees, and pale stony soil. Know that the common name is ve- uh, velvet ant, colloquially called uh, the sorcerer ants. Furthermore, despite the name, the velvet ants are wingless wasps, uh, part of the Hypermenetra order, which includes ants, bees, and wasps. If we have to talk about the distinctive characteristics, firstly the curve's characteristic is the ultra black coloration, which means it absorbs nearly all visible light, reflecting less than one percent of it. Know that this is achieved through microstructures in the exoskeleton, which is overlapping lamellae, and also the dense hair-like setae combined with the black pigment. Know that it is only found in the females. Furthermore, the first known ultra black species in the Hymenoptera hypot Hymenoptera order. Moving on to talk about the functions of the ultra black. Firstly, it acts as predator protection. 
so it likely serves as a warning signal due to insects painful sting venom and hard exoskeleton secondly uh, it provides potential uv protection but which is not conclusively proven thirdly if you have to compare with the other species you can compare with the birds of the paradise and peacock spiders which enhances the mating displays then deep sea fish acts as a invisible tick cloak and vipers assisting in the temperature regulation now what are the scientific implications of it see the natural ultra black coloration provides a model for the man made materials also the applications in the solar energy harnessing and precision telescopes and thirdly development of camouflage coatings for the military use but these two are the unresolved questions now if you have to talk about the significance for the science and technology see it could inspire the advances in the ultra black and ultra white materials where the ultra white reflects up to 97.9% sunlight uh, with potential applications in combining global warming uh, by, by cool, uh, cooling surfaces the third article of today says that the commerce ministry is planning to expand a food testing infrastructure to enhance exports according to a senior government official furthermore the export inspection council under the ministry has initiated a detailed gap assessment study on food testing infrastructure for exports in this context we'll talk about the relevant aspects see the commerce ministry is focusing on enhancing the food testing infrastructure to boost the exports so the export inspection council under the department of commerce is leading this initiative if you have to talk at the current initiatives under the export initiative inspection council see firstly the gap assessment study under this conducting commodity wise and region wise analysis of food testing infrastructure and aiming for a comprehensive plan to address gaps within 2 to 3 months also talking about the adoption of advanced technology see iot based sampling techniques for the proof testing are being used and also launch of an integrated traceability module for inspection testing and certification processes then the infrastructure development which is about establishing new laboratories in ahmedabad faridabad and mangalore furthermore the expansion to karnataka of andhra pradesh is also done and lastly the increasing number of accredited laboratories from 21 in 2013-14 to 78 in 2024-25 then with respect to the global recognition agreements see entering into the mutual recognition agreements and mous with the countries to ensure global recognition of uh, testing standards furthermore strengthening the participation in the international organizations such as the codex eliminatorius uh, iso and the wto so this is the significance uh, for the exports because of the taken initiatives the next article talks about spadex and chandrayaan 4 mission in this context we'll look at the details about the missions firstly talking about the spadex mission see it is a mission initiated by the indian space research organization focused on mastering in space docking technology know that the mission aims to demonstrate the ability of two satellites to dock and undock while in motion in orbit around the earth now what is the importance of this mission see the in space docking technology is crucial for the future space operations particularly for the satellite servicing and for constructing space stations know that docking in space allows the spacecraft to line up after being launched separately enabling more complex and duration task, space tasks also this technology will be integral to the operation of the bharti antarik station which is india's planned space station now if we have to talk about the mission details see the launch date of the mission was 30 december 2024 and the orbit details include two satellites which are the chaser and target which will be launched into a 470 km wide circular orbit at a 55 degrees inclination for the more the satellites will follow a local time cycle of approximately 66 days moving on to talk about the satellites the spacecraft weigh around 220 kg each where the chaser and the target satellites will demonstrate a docking maneuvers which is the primary objective of the mission apart from the primary objective there is secondary objective also which means after the docking is achieved the two satellites will move on the secondary objectives which include transferring electric power between the docking spacecraft know that this is essential for the future technologies like the space robotics spacecraft control and payload operations after undocking now why is it significant for india see if successful india will become the fourth country globally to have the capability for in space docking moving on to talk about the chandrayaan 4 see this mission aims to collect samples from the moon surface and bring them back to earth for scientific analysis significantly chandrayaan 4 would involve docking of space modules twice during the mission when which is when the modules fly back from the moon to unite with the main spacecraft and when the samples are transferred to the reentry vehicle 
Know that ISRO has never docked uh, the spacecraft earlier. Notably, docking is a process uh, where two spacecraft moving at extremely high speeds are aligned uh, in a precise orbit and joined together. Furthermore, the Chandrayaan-4 spacecraft will have five separate modules in, in comparison to the Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft, which made a historic landing near the south pole of the moon, which had three modules only, which is the propulsion module, lander and a rover. So these are the following components uh, of the, or the constituents of the Chandrayaan-4 mission, which are the lunar propulsion module, lander module, so then after that the samples will move to the ascender module so we have the, then we have the ascender module transfer module and lastly the re-entry module the next article says that the total enrollment of students has dropped by over a crore in 2023-24 from that of the previous years uh, shows the latest data released by the education ministry also a total of 24.8 crore students uh, enrolled in the academic year 2023-24 the Unified District Information System for the Education Plus uh, report released uh, for the Ministry said. In this context, uh, we'll talk about the Unified District Information System for Education Plus, in short called the UDI-SE Plus. See, it is uh, developed by the Department of School Education Literacy and launched in 2018-19, which is to address the issues related to manual data collection in schools by transitioning to an online system. Now, if you have to talk about the objectives, Firstly, to ensure quality education as a right for every student. Secondly, to enhance facilities and infrastructure in government schools to compete with the private schools. And lastly, to provide a robust, real-time and credible information collection system for the objective evaluation of the education systems. Now, if you have to talk about the system features, see, developed under the Ministry of Education, it collects data on the school resources, infrastructure, teachers, enrollment, examination results, etc. Furthermore, it is recognized, uh, covers recognized schools uh, imparting formal education from pre-primary to 12th class uh, across 28 states and 8 union territories. Uh. Also, it utilizes an online data collection from the different, from different uh, divided into 11 sections. Uh. Now, talking about the data collection process, see the schools successfully onboarded receive a unique uh, UDISC code serving as a national identifier. So the school is the unit of the data collection and district is the unit of data distribution. So why is this significant? See, it is recognized as the official statistic system by the Ministry of Education. Furthermore, it is operational across all districts in India. Lastly, it supports planning, resource allocation, implementation of programs and progress assessment. So this is the state-wise enrollment decline according to 2018-19 versus 2020-23-24. The next article talks about the One Nation, One Subscription Scheme. In this context, we'll talk about it. See, it is launched by the UN Cabinet shared by Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi. It is a central sector scheme uh, which provides uh, country-wide access to scholarship, uh, scholarly research articles and journal publications for higher education institutions and research and development laboratories. Uh, if you have to talk at the key features, see, firstly, know that the duration is three calendar years, uh, which is 2025 to 2027. Talking about its administration, see it is managed through a unified digital portal and is coordinated by the INFLI BNET, which stands for Informational Library Network Center. It is an autonomous uh, inter-university center under the UOGC. Furthermore, if you have to talk about the coverage, see over 6,300 institutions are covered, uh, including higher education institutions under the central and state governments and also the R&D laboratories of the central government. Significantly, nearly 1.8 crore students, faculty and researchers are benefited from it. Talking about its benefits, firstly, it ensures universal access to scholarly journals and articles for students and researchers across the country. Secondly, it promotes interdisciplinary research and inclusion of Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities in research development. Thirdly, it aligns with the Vixit, Vixit Bharat at 2047, NEP 2020 and Anusandhan Research Research Foundation Bill. Then, what about the implementation mechanism? Firstly, it is a centralized subscription where single subscription is there coordinated nationally by the INFLNI BNET. Secondly, it has access portal where the institutions access resources via the One Nation, One Subscription portal. Then, talking about the review mechanism, see the ANRF to periodically monitor the usage of the One Nation, One Subscription by the institutions and research publications of Indian authors under the scheme. And also awareness campaigns uh, are conducted under the scheme. The next article says that see Bhuvanesh Kumar uh, assumed charge as the chief executive officer of the Unique Identification Authority of India 
in short called the UIDAI on Wednesday. He is an officer of 1995 batch IAS from the Uttar Pradesh cadre. In this context, we will talk about the UIDAI. See, the Unique Identification Authority of India, in short called the UIDAI, is a statutory body established under the Aadhaar Targeted Delivery of Financial and Other Subsidies, Benefits and Services Act of 2016. Significantly, its primary objective is to issue a unique identification number to Indian residents known as the Aadhaar number. So, know that it was established on 12th July 2016 under the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. Furthermore, the Aadhaar Act 2016 was amended by the Aadhaar and Other Laws Amendment Act 2019. So, this Aadhaar number is a 12-digit number issued to residents of India based on their biometric and demographic data. So, as of September 2023, 138.08 crore Aadhaar numbers have been generated. If you have to look at the primary functions of the UIDAI, see, firstly, UIDAI manages the complete life cycle of the Aadhaar form enrollment from enrollment to authentication. Secondly, it ensures the security identification information authentication records. Thirdly, it develops systems for issuing, updating and authenticating Aadhaar numbers. And lastly, it ensures compliance with the Aadhaar Act by individuals and agencies. Talking about the mission and vision. See, the vision is to empower Aadhaar number holders with a unique identity and a digital platform to authenticate their identity. Whereas the mission is to ensure efficient, transparent and targeted delivery of benefits and services to the Aadhaar holders. Also to create polit policies for the Aadhaar issuance, updates and authentication. So this is with respect to the composition of the UIDAI. Then this is with respect to the organizational structure. And this is with respect to the finance and budget. The next article says that excessive nitrates have been found in the groundwater in 440 districts as of 2023, which is an increase from the 359 such districts in 2017, according to a report by the Central Groundwater Board. In this context, we will talk about the uh, relevant aspects. See, firstly, if you have to talk about the nitrate contamination, uh, see, it is found in the 440 districts in 2023, up from 359 districts in 2017. So, about 56% of the India's districts report nitrate levels exceeding the safe limit of 45 milligrams per litre. Now, what is the cause for it? See, overuse of supply, subsidized synthetic nitrogen fertilizers in farming is the cause for this contamination. If you have to talk about the regional highlights, the highest contamination is seen in the states of Rajasthan, which is 49%, Karnataka, which is 48%, and Tamil Nadu, which is 37%. Furthermore, the notable contamination is seen in Maharashtra, which is 35.74%, Telangana, which is 27.48%, Andhra Pradesh, which is 23.5%, and Madhya Pradesh, which is 22.58%. Also, the Rajasthan, Gujarat, and Madhya Pradesh face long-standing nitrate issues. Furthermore, the central and the southern region show an increasing trend uh, in nitrate contamination. Now, what are the other chemical cont uh, contaminants? So the others are the fluoride, uranium, and also there, these are the following are the high contamination areas. Now, what are the health impacts uh, with respect to the use of nitrates? See, usually the safe limit for it is 45 milligrams per litre. But uh, if you have to look at the health impacts because of it, it reacts with the hemoglobin forming methemoglobin. Uh, which hinders the oxygen transport in the blood, causing uh, methemoglobinomia. Furthermore, it causes a blue baby syndrome, which is a bluish color uh, decolor discoloration of the skin uh, in infants due to excessive nitrate levels. Notably, it is caused uh, by the reduced oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. Furthermore, high nitrate levels contribute to the formation of the carcinogens and also environmentally speaking, it accelerates the eutrophication in the water bodies. So this is with respect to the uranium and this is with respect to the fluoride. So in this video, we have discussed 8 articles in total for today. We'll be back again with another video tomorrow. Thank you.